Okay, hello, hello. Can you hear me, guys? Good evening. Good evening. I'm present. Hey. Good evening. So, today is the day. I got a feeling. Today is the day. Today is what? Thursday? Thursday? My camera's running away. Okay, Thursday. Can somebody tell me what did we study yesterday? What was the topic yesterday? I can't remember. Really? Asking about countable and uncountable things? No. Countables and uncountables. Good. For example. Uh oh. We finished? Yes, that's today's last lesson of Unit 2. Great job. But yesterday we were talking about countables and uncountables, you know. And I just wanted to hear an example. Anybody? Expressions of quantity. There is. We were using much, less, more, and enough. Okay. Okay. I think that topic is covered. Do you have any questions? No. Okay. Oh, Good. Start the class because it's 9.02 p.m. already. So let's talk about the next topic, which, as your classmate said, has to do with indirect questions. Let's watch a sh for a short minute uh, the video. Let's see if you get it. Let's pay attention, okay? Talking about the present, we could be talking about able to ask and answer indirect questions about a city or a new place that you might visit. For example, you'll be able to make the following questions. Could you tell me where the bank is? Do you know where the nearest ATM is? Do you know where the restrooms are? Can you tell me how often the buses run? Do you know where I can catch the bus? Before I begin to explain the grammar involved, what I would like to do is I would like to play an audio program which illustrates how this topic is used. And so what we're going to do at this point is we're going to listen to a conversation and we're going to listen to different questions that are asked about a city. Your task is to listen carefully and I will ask you questions at the end of the audio program. Excuse me, could you tell me where the nearest ATM is? There's one upstairs, across from the duty-free shop. Great. And do you know where I can catch a bus to the city? Sure. Just follow the signs for transportation. Okay. And can you tell me how often they run? They run every 20 minutes or Excuse me. It's me again. I'm sorry. I need some more information, if you don't mind. Do you know how much the bus costs? It's $20. You can buy a ticket on the bus. $20? Wow. Well, a taxi costs about $50. Hmm. Okay. And do you know where a bookstore is? I'd like to get a guidebook. Go upstairs and turn right. You'll see one on your left. Thanks very much. Have a nice day. You too. Let me present some structure at this time. What we want to do in this class is we want to learn how to change direct questions into indirect questions. And the reason that we want to do this is because it's a lot more polite to use indirect questions. So for example, if I say, where's the bank? It's less polite than if I say, could you tell me where the bank is? And what we're going to learn is we're going to learn some rules that we're going to follow in changing these questions from direct to indirect questions. We're going to learn how to do it with the verb to be, and we're also going to learn how to change WH questions with either do or did. Now let's try to make sense of this whole concept here. 
what we want to do is we want to be able to turn direct questions into indirect questions. And let me propose a formula on how to do this, if you will. So we want to turn the question, where is the bank, into an indirect question. And the way that we'll do that is we will use some kind of polite model verb. So in this case, could you tell me? All right. And then this is going to be followed by a WH word. In this case, it happens to be where, but it could be any other WH word. For example, it could be what time, how often, when, etc. Any kind of WH word is what we're going to include here. So could you tell me, and in this case I will ask where, this is going to be followed by the subject. So in this case it happens to be the bank, where the bank, and then finally we're, we're going to include the verb. So in this case, could you tell me where the bank is? And just so that we follow the pattern that I'm proposing here, I'm going to go ahead and play with the colors for now. Now let's try to make sense of that second question that you see there towards the bottom. Where are the restrooms? That's the direct question. What we want to do is we want to turn that question into an indirect question. And you can do that in different ways. OK. Um, ¿A quién quiero que sean honestos, por favor? Porque sé que para algunos este tema ya es triviado, ya lo han visto varias veces. Para otros puede ser un tema muy, muy nuevo. Sin embargo, al ponerlo en contexto les parecerá muy facilísimo o eh, les permitirá eh, ubicarse en su propio lenguaje, ¿no? Uh, Ricardo, dime, ¿te parece nuevo el tema o lo encuentras confuso? Um, tal vez nuevo en algunas, en algunas partes, pero sé que trata de lo lo fundamental es sobre, sobre eh, la cortesía, preguntas corteses, uh -huh. preguntas eh, un tanto populares y sobre diferentes, eh, digamos, quehaceres de la calle. O que, que... Más o menos, vamos ubicando. A ver, eh, es diferente, Ricardo, que yo te diga, llego a tu casa de visita y te digo, ¿dónde está el baño? Y no te conozco. <risa> Y un solo, ¿dónde está el baño? Sí, está pesado, ¿verdad? En cambio, si no te conozco y llego a tu casa y te digo, disculpe, ¿podría decirme dónde está el baño? Sí, es diferente, ¿ya? Ok. Could you, could you. Could you tell me? Ajá, podría decirme. Y si te digo, ¿de casualidad sabe o sabe dónde está el baño? En lugar de, de nuevo, ¿no? ¿Dónde están los baños? Es diferente. ¿Dónde están los baños? Sería la pregunta directa. Eh, ¿Sabe usted dónde están los baños? Sería la pregunta indirecta. Y sí, exacto. Sirve para ser más cortés a la hora de hablar. ¿Ok? No tiene relación con el contexto de, de cuándo ocurre esto. Sin embargo, el contexto es buscar información. Y la manera en la que lo hacemos, de manera directa, es pesado. Es mal educado pedir información de manera directa. Es como que yo le diga a alguien, le digo a Marlon, dame, o oh, quiero ver, quiero ver, sería, uh, sí, ajá, dame cinco dólares. Sí. You let me? <risa> ajá. En lugar de decirle, ¿me podrías dar cinco dólares? Ya, aunque tenga o no tenga cuchillo, yo igual para Marlon es como más polite, más corte, vea que, <ríe> que le hablen de esa manera, yo estaría más dispuesto a dar el dinero. Ok, good, so, y ahora sí tiene sentido, ¿no? Yeah. Ok, well, now that we have placed this into context, you have different options, and you can make up, you can make up your own with models models can somebody tell me what are the models hermes give me a model i'm sorry teacher but i'm late in the class yes i'm old <laughs> <laughs> give me a model do you remember the model verbs uh um, cool, cool excellent cool. 
Good. Thank you, Rebecca. Another one. Hi, by the way. Ken. Ken? Yes, Ken. Very good. Giovanni. Good. Ken. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You don't know? Perfect. No. Erika. We said could. We said Ken. Erika Elizabeth. Uh, Ken? We said can and could. Give me another modal verb. Oh, do you know? Uh, no, that's not a modal verb. Okay. Uh, okay. Don't worry, don't worry. Stephanie, we said could, can. Uh, show. Should is a model verb. Can I use it in a question? I. Yes. <laughs> yes, you can use it in the question. Okay, Giovanni, one more. Would. Would. Yes, that is Sorry. right. Would. Okay, so. In this context, you can use would, could, can, even may. Hmm. It all depends on the context. Would you listen? I'm just going to put the um, word here. I'm going to share my word with you. So in this context, I could use could, can, would okay now this is to sound more polite in the examples jose was using do you know mm -hmm. now let's become more natural or more american and you can say uh, would you happen would you happen to know. Continuing with the same example, I hope you're taking notes. This will help you all of your life. <laughs> Believe me. Will you? Oh, I'm keep it in words, letters. I'm sorry. Would you happen to have? This is like in Spanish saying. Uh, de casualidad. Would you happen? Would you happen to know what time it is? Listen. Would you happen to know what time it is? Okay. Would you happen to have a quarter? I'm really sorry. I I'm short of money. I have no money right now. So, and I need to take the bus. Would you happen to have a quarter? Okay. Could, yes, it's more used as well. Could you tell me and as on the example? Another one, could you do me a favor? Okay, could you do me a favor? Tell me that. Uh, tell me what time it is. And I, I'm more direct in that point. Could you tell me? Could you do me a favor? Tell me what time it is, please. You see, it's more natural. Okay. Could you tell me um, when is the next bus coming? When's the next bus, bus coming? Okay, can somebody give me an example following Ken? Can somebody give me examples? <laughs> yes, can somebody give me <laughs> no, something like, can I ask you something? Can I ask you something? Okay. 
What time is it now? Ok, vamos a ponerlo en contexto. Um, disculpe que lo moleste, Hermes. ¿Quién pintó ese cuadro? Ese es el contexto. Disculpe que lo moleste, Hermes. ¿Quién pintó ese cuadro detrás de usted? Es diferente que le diga, Hermes, ¿Quién pintó ese cuadro? Hermes <laughs> like, what? Right? What the hell? <laughs> what the hell, right? <laughs> Nada que ver con el tema de que estamos hablando. Eh, ni siquiera le hablo hacia Hermes. Entonces es como muy mal educado. ¿Ya? ¿Quién te, pe quién te, quién te peinó el pelo, Rebeca? ¿Ah, ¿Para una mujer? Oh my God. ¿Por qué me pregunta eso, right? En lugar de decirle, Rebeca, disculpe, ¿quién le pintó el pelo? Qué bonito, o sea, cambia la situación. Si ¿Sí me explico, de eso se trata las preguntas directas y las indirectas. Ok, so, can I ask you something? Rebeca, can I ask you something? Who did your hair? Who did your hair? O algo muy importante, y les voy a decir en español porque creo que es muy importante que lo adapten a, a su persona, um, su tono de voz. La manera en la que gesticulas, incluso aunque no te estén viendo la cara, eh, se puede identificar cuando una persona es arrogante o pesada, o está de mal humor, o está feliz, ¿sí o no? El tono de voz. Ya no se diga las, las, la manera en la que gesticulas cuando hablas. So be careful with that. Muy, cu mucho cuidado. En 30 años nunca he visto un americano que no se exprese, que no sea expresivo al hablar. O nunca he escuchado a un americano también que no sea expresivo al hablar. Ok. Good. So, using close questions as on the video, just the, the way it is on the video. Do you know, is another common one, what else have you heard? What else have you heard? ¿Qué más han escuchado? Cuando se trata de preguntas pol um, corteses. When it comes to polite requests. Do you mind? mind? Now, with will you mind, you need to continue with an ing verb. Would you mind telling me, and maybe an indirect object, would you mind telling me what time it is? Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. Would you mind working extra hours? Okay. I'm going to erase this. Would you mind working extra hours? Your boss, right? It's different if your boss comes to you and tells you, you have to work extra hours. <gasps> okay. It's different if he says, would you mind working extra hours? Overtime. Okay, any other? Okay, let me check really quick. If you haven't seen the video, let's continue with the indirect questions and the examples with Jose. You see, you have, do you know? Do you know? Do you know when? Do you know what? Can you tell me how? Do you know where? Could you tell me where? And yes, uh, excellent, Marlon. I can say, would you mind? Mm -hmm. Would you mind um, asking for a bus? Would you mind asking for a taxi? For a taxi? Okay, do you have any questions? No questions? No, teacher. It's clear. Bless you. Okay, everything's clear. No more questions? No questions? Are you sure? 
Yeah. Um, what is the difference between coal and wool? Wool. Could and wood. Could and wood. Okay, could and wood. The difference is that could means, I'll go straight to the point, I'm sorry. Could means podría. And this is under your control. Okay. Under your control or your capacity. Okay. It could happen. But would means nothing. Okay. Would adds um, would adds the um, the last. Um, Will you share your screen, please? Yes, right now. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen. Holy mother. Sorry. My bad. So, <laughs> I thought I was sharing my screen, guys. I'm sorry. Okay, could means podría. So, it's something that is under your control or your capacity. So, I could dance. I could dance. If I want it, I could give you money. But I don't want to. I could learn English, but I don't study that often. Okay, now would adds the last uh, particle of ria. Okay, would doesn't mean anything. Okay, would is like adding dia to a verb. Yeah, that's what it does. For example, okay, you will say, you see, mm -hmm. okay, so that's what you're saying. I would run, or well, simply would run, right? I will fly. And you're saying, correría, volaría. Got it? ¿Cuándo se ocupa? Could and would are both models. Los dos son modales. Could también es el pasado de can. ¿Ok? So, ¿por qué cosas bajo tu control? Porque no podrías decir, it could rain. Puede ser que lo hayas escuchado, pero estaría mal, mal um, aplicado. It could rain. Podría llover. Porque tiene que haber un factor que, que afecte esa condición, para que esa condición se cumpla. Ahí tendría que ocupar might, que es la otra confusión que puedas tener. Y cuando algo está fuera de tu control, ocupas might, que también significa podría. ¿Ok? Nadie puede controlar might. Como por ejemplo, the weather. It might rain. Ok. Ok. Eh, ¿Si ¿sí está más clarito así? ¿Es it clear? No, no. Ok. I could dance. I could tell you more. I could tell you more. Podría decirte más. But let's move on. Eh, ok. Mira el video de nuevo, trata de aplicar ejemplos, ok, y envíamelo si gustas para, para poderlo chequear, ok. Eh, en cuanto a would, súper rápido, would se ocupa para hablar de situaciones irreales, situaciones irreales, algunos le llaman futuro irreal, ok, y estrictamente tiene que cumplirse una segunda condición para que eso ocurra. I will dance, I will dance. Yo bailaría, but I have no legs. Okay. For example, I will dance, but I have no legs. Bailaría, pero no tengo piernas. Good? Okay. Okay. So, going back to the point, let's do an, a quick exercise 
um, I'm going to split the class in small groups so we can talk about indirect questions using what you have seen here and on the platform. Okay, would you agree? Would you agree to make groups and practice indirect questions? Okay, you're so quiet today. Oh my God. Okay, let's start the sessions and let's go ahead and practice together in groups, okay? Make three, at least three indirect questions. Go ahead. Rani, Abel, Marlon. Okay. Let's try. Okay, guys, let's work on three examples at least of indirect questions being polite. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you help me, please? This thing is an um, indirect. Could you help me? Um, yes, that's a good example. Could you help me? Um, no. Can you help me? Can Can you help me, please? Can you help me, please? Um, okay. How much do taxes cost? Yep. Can you help me, please? Uh, how much do taxes cost here? ¿Podría ayudarme? ¿Cuánto cuesta el taxi aquí? Podría ser, por ejemplo, Hermes, could you tell me, please, who have painted your paint? ¿O cómo sería? Who, who, who did your painting? Who did your painting? Who did your painting? Who did your painting? Uh -huh. Ya. Yeah. Ok. Who painted your paint? Who painted who your painted paint? Your paint? <laughs> And it is possible. Okay. <laughs> ¿Quién pintó tu pintura? Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, Giovanni, could you tell me where did you buy your headset? Perdón, pero estas son preguntas directas o indirectas. Estamos creando indirectas. Forma directa. La directa, ¿cuál sería? Where did you buy the headset, Giovanni? <laughs> okay. Uh -huh, go on. And instead, you go like, sorry, Giovanni, could you tell me uh, where did you buy your headsets? They're cool. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Great job, guys. You got it. Keep going. Okay, thanks. Okay, sería entonces ocupar eh, las tres opciones que tenemos, que es. Uh -huh. uh, what is, could you okay para aterrizar esto un poco pensemos en las preguntas directas que hacemos Usualmente ocupamos la WH para encontrar información específica, ¿verdad? For example, ahí está en la plataforma, por ejemplo, ¿dónde puedo encontrar un mapa? ¿Dónde puedo obtener un mapa? Where can I get a map? ¿Sí? Esa sería la pregunta directa. Where can I get a map? ¿Ok? Entonces, el punto del ejercicio sería agregar una pregunta indirecta al principio 
para sonar más educado. Ok. Um, could you tell me where can I get a map? You see? Podría decir. O sea que, perdón. ¿Hm? O sea que van como juntas. O sea, eh, eh, al principio este school can would sí. y como después de eso agregar como la W es question. Yeah, she got it. So, creo que te acabas de unir, ¿verdad? Sí. Sí, sí, es, sí. Gente, gracias por unirte. Vean, es como en el español que decís, eh, en lugar de, de preguntarle a Juliana, eh, acaba, a, acaba de entrar. Ajá. Sería feo, ¿no? Y pesado. En lugar de eso te diría, Juliana, disculpe, se acaba de agregar al grupo. O, oh, ¿podría decirme, Juliana, se acaba de agregar al grupo? Suena más educado. ¿Ya? Ok. Uh -huh. Es como... Yeah, Solidad, usted sabe, o usted sabe qué hora son, en lugar de qué hora son. ¿Eh? Okay. Porque a un extraño no le puede llegar a, des... a preguntarle algo de una sola vez, ¿verdad? Tenés que ser un poco cortés. Sí. Ese es el ejemplo, ok. Bien. Y esto que estamos viendo ahí en la pantalla, que están compartiendo, son como lo que va antes de la pregunta directa. Could you tell me? Could you do me a favor? Can I ask you something? Estos son muy comunes. Um, do you know what time it is? Could you... Bueno, would you mind telling me? Would you mind running to the side? Would you, would you mind moving a little bit? Um, eso, eso es un ejemplo clarísimo. Cuando vas en el bus y alguien te dice, muévase, para poderse sentar. Se oye feo, ¿no? O de un solo, se puede mover. ¿Ok? Es diferente a que te digan, ¿podría moverse? ¿O podría darme espacio? Right? Ahí ocuparía ese. Would you mind moving? Would you please moving, please? Move. En este caso... Uh -huh. Move. Sí, Stephanie. Oh. Una pregunta sencilla por decir algo. Solamente puedo decirle aquí en la clase, como que estuviéramos en examen. Can you help me with the exam? Mm -hmm. Sí, ahora agreguemos algo más. Um, digamos que no me estás preguntando a mí, sino a otro compañero. Mm -hmm. Do you know if the teacher could help me with the exam? Ya directamente el teacher sería, um, si sí, eso no podría ser una pregunta indirecta, um, tendrías que decir, excuse me, do you have a minute? Ahí sí, do you have a minute? Or can you come please? And then, could you help me with the exam? O sea que esas preguntas son muy directas. Ajá, estas serían. Son muy puntuales. Exacto, preguntarle en solo a alguien, can you help me? O sea, ajá. A pesar de que estás usando un, muda, un modal. Ajá. Uh -huh. Pasaría lo mismo con que diga, will you tell me which topic you need to study? Study. We need to study, exactly. Will you tell me which topic we need to study? Perfect. Aunque estemos... O sea, esa también suena muy impropia. No, esa es la propia. Will, ah, ok. Will you tell me? Sería como la parte cortés, ¿no? Would you tell Ajá. me? La parte directa sería Which topic do we need to study? Es como que tú escribas en el chat de WhatsApp ahorita Which topic do we need to study? En lugar de decir Would you tell me Which topic do we need to study? Ahí sí, es un perfecto ejemplo Ok Ok Good Gracias Good job Keep going, guys At least three sentences Three questions, I'm sorry with politeness, you know, with indirect questions, and then we come back, okay? In other, other caso sería, uh, can I ask you something in el caso que esté en un supermercado? Where is the, uh, the, the tomatoes here? Mm -hmm. 
Where are the tomatoes? Right. Uh, where are the tomatoes? Uh -huh. Okay. Teacher, pero es, es correcto que usemos la pregunta así o el are tiene que ir al final. Uh -huh. Ah, okay. Según el ejemplo de José, sí, tiene que ir al final el verbo to be. Thank you. Where uh -huh. the tomatoes are. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ambas uh -huh. pueden, Rebeca. Ambas se pueden. Where are the tomatoes? Can you tell me where are the tomatoes? Uh -huh. Can you tell me where? Y en este, y en este caso, teacher, could you do me favor? Tell me what is the nearest hospital? Perfect. Will you do me a favor? Tell me where is the nearest hospital? Uh -huh. Podría hacerme un favor. Solo hasta hospital o is también tiene que ir. También se puede de la forma que dice Rebeca. Where the nearest hospital is. Ah, ok. Hospital is. Ok, pero las dos son correctas. ¿no? Las dos son correctas, correctito. Ok. okay. Uh -huh. Any other questions? Nope. Okay, so we're good. Good. Let's go back to the main session so we can catch the examples with all of our classmates, okay? Okay. okay. Okay, I think we're all back. Do you still have any questions with this topic? Oh no, we're missing some of you in 20 seconds. Okay, Giovanni, Herman, Rebecca, Erika, Marlon, do you have any questions with indirect questions? Could you tell me guys, do you have any questions with indirect questions? At the moment, no, teacher. Not at the moment? Okay, good. No. And yes, Rebecca was pointing out something very important that I would like to make emphasis on. Following the example on the platform, if you noticed, Jose is pointing at uh, that same thing. There are two ways of saying things, right? Okay, could you tell me how often uh, no, that wouldn't apply. Let me see. How much do taxes cost? How much cost? No, aquí no lo podría aplicar tampoco. Where should I go shopping? Where should I shop? Where should I shop? Could be an option. Where can I get a map? I forgot the example, Rebecca. Do you remember? <laughs> oh, here. Where is the nearest bank? Where is the bank? Or I can say where the bank is. So, Making indirect questions. Could you tell me where the bank is? Could you tell me where is the bank? When it comes to using the verb to be, I can use the verb to be on the regular way. I will do an open question. Where is? Or adding the verb to be at the end. Okay. You got it? Okay, good. Good, so that was that topic. Let's move on because there's a lot to see uh, and we need to finish this section by tomorrow, section number three. So let's move on to the next topic. On section number three. So we have Evaluations with adjectives and nouns. What? Okay. Let me reproduce the video again so we can get into context this topic and discuss it, okay? As a class. Evaluations with adjectives and nouns. Wow. Okay. Let's pay attention, guys.
Hi everyone, by the end of this class you will be able to give your opinion about houses and apartments. Additionally, you will be able to evaluate your own house and apartment. For example, you will be able to make the following statements. Apartments are too small for pets, but houses are too expensive. Houses cost too much money. Before I talk about the grammar involved in this particular class, what I would like to do now is I would like to play an audio program which illustrates how this topic is used. We will listen to a few people talk about their opinions on houses and apartments. Your task is to listen carefully and answer a couple of questions that I'll have for you at the end of the audio program. Apartments are too small for pets. Apartments aren't big enough for families. Apartments don't have enough parking spaces. Apartments have just as many expenses as houses. Apartments don't have as many rooms as houses. Houses aren't as safe as apartments. Houses aren't as convenient as apartments. Houses cost too much money. Houses don't have enough closet space. Houses don't have as much privacy as apartments. Let me present some structure now. The first thing that I would like to do is to show you how to make evaluations using adjectives. And particularly, we're going to learn how to use the words enough and to. After that, we're going to make evaluations, but this time we're going to use nouns. And at the same time, we're also going to use the words enough and also to. First of all, what are adjectives? Well, adjectives are those words that describe nouns. So they describe people, places, or things. Since we're talking about evaluating houses and apartments, what we want to do is we want to think about some of those adjectives that we might use to evaluate a house or an apartment. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write a lot of those words here. And then what I would like for you to do is to uh, memorize this and uh, maybe study them if you're not familiar with them. So for example, we have the adjectives comfortable, convenient, dangerous, dark, bright, expensive, huge, small, inconvenient, modern, noisy, private, quiet, safe, small, spacious. And I'm pretty sure you can think of many more. So let me present some structure at this time on how to make sense of this evaluation that you see there towards the left. Apartments aren't big enough for families. So in order for us to make that particular evaluation, we can think of the following structure. So let me go ahead and write that now. Following this structure, we can see that we're going to have a subject. So in this case, we have apartments. This is followed by the verb to be. In this case, it happens to be in its negative form. Okay. And then, and then this is going to be followed by the adjective. So in this case, the adjective is big. Then this is going to be followed by enough. And then um, we're going to have some sort of complement here. So in this case, it happens to be families, right? So if we look at the pattern, we have a subject. I'm going to go ahead and follow the colors so that we can see what's happening there. That's in black. There we go. So we can see that the subject is apartments. Then this is followed by the verb to be. In this case, it happens to be the verb to be in its negative form. After that, we're going to have some sort of adjective. And then it's going to follow the word enough. And then we're going to include um, some sort of complement, if you will. So if we think about other evaluations that we can say about apartments, either apartments or homes, then we can say the following. I'm going to go ahead and copy this because the next evaluation is going to be quite similar. So we can say the following. Apartments aren't, and so I'm going to change the adjective here. So I'm going to say aren't spacious enough for families. Okay. And let's do one more. Uh, we can also say that apartments aren't and I'm going to change the adjective now. I'm going to say apartments aren't comfortable enough for families. 
the next thing that I would like to do is to make sense of that second evaluation that you see there at the bottom. Now using the word to. It's a okay, I see you like trying to read through the letters, right? I think you all know about uh, adjectives, right? At this point, you know about adjectives, like the ones that Jose are, is using. Big, spacious, comfortable, and with the word enough, okay, to make comparisons, we use the adjective before enough, okay? And you can use enough um, in positive and negative statements. You can also use it in questions as well, in the case of enough. Are you tall enough? Are you tall enough? Are apartments big enough for families? So yes, you can play around that. Now, are you understanding the topic? Yes, teacher. Yes, okay. Okay, let's move on. Yes, teacher. Good. Can somebody give me an example using another kind of adjective other than big, spacious, comfortable, small? What else can you it's tell true. about apartments? Quiet. Mm -hmm. Are quiet, quiet enough? Quiet enough for families? Quiet enough. Safe. Fa uh, safe enough family for families. Safe enough. Safe enough. Uh huh. Safe enough. For families, what about money? Uh, expensive. Expensive <laughs> enough. That's right. So apartments are expensive enough for families. Son lo suficientemente caras. Estará bien decir suficientemente caro? Mm, all right. It's weird. That's weird. Yeah. That's weird. That's weird, exactly. That's expensive enough mm, for me. I like to buy expensive stuff. Yeah. Okay. Good. Now, following the structure, uh, you can replace um, adjectives because, as you can see on the left side, you have comparisons with adjectives only. Okay. Evaluations with adjectives and then comparisons with adjectives. So you have houses aren't as convenient as apartments. Okay, houses are just as convenient as apartment. Can somebody translate these two sentences? Houses aren't as convenient as apartments. Help. Mm. Las casas no son tan convenientes como los apartamentos. Excellent. No. Tan como. Excellent. Okay. Thank you, Marlon. What about houses are just as convenient as apartments? Son tan convenientes como los apartamentos. Son justamente tan convenientes como los apartamentos. Okay. Good. Since you're very quiet, I will move on and start selecting victims so you can talk. Let's go with Carmen Irene. Okay. Let's go with evaluations with nouns. It says apartments don't have enough parking spaces. Translate, please. Apartments don't have enough no parking space. Spaces? Uh huh. Spaces. How okay. How? Will, how, will how <laughs> okay, how can you translate that into Spanish, Carmen? I'm just trying to make sure you're understanding everybody. Okay. Okay, apartments don't have enough parking spaces. Que los apartamentos no son suficientemente... Don't have... They don't. No, que los apartamentos no tienen suficientemente espacio. Uh -huh, no, tiene... no, 
Parqueo. Suficientemente. Parqueo. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Suficientemente sí. espacio en los parqueos o parqueo. Que no es suficientemente. Es, es suficiente. Okay. Mente. No, sin el mente. No tienen suficiente. Suficiente espacio. Para, para, parqueo. Parqueos, nada. Para, 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 para parquearse, algo así. Uh -huh. Suficientes parqueos, suficientes espacios para parqueo. Ok. Entonces okay. sería teacher suficiente, no suficientemente. Correcto. Yes. Okay. Mente es cuando ves un adjetivo que termina con L y Y. Ah, ok. Uh -huh. L G. L Y. L Y. L -Y. L -Y. Uh -huh. Excellent. Very good. Ok, let's see. Da, 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 da. Abel and Nilsson. The next one. Houses cost too much money. Houses cost too much money. Easy. ¿Cuánto dinero cuesta más caro? Whoa, it's not a question. It's not a question. It's an affirmation. It's an evaluation. Houses cost too much money. Las casas cuestan. You got it. Very good. Las clases cuestan mucho dinero. Okay, let's go with German Ramos. Let's use comparisons with nouns. For example, apartments have just as many rooms as houses. Uh, <laughs> Listen, apartments have just as many rooms as houses. Eh, los apartamentos no tienen eh, muchas habitaciones como las casas. Mm -hmm. Ok. Los apartamentos tienen... Somebody else? Ah. Uh -huh. Abel or Herman, I'm sorry. Justamente como las casas. Apartamentos eh, tienen eh, menos habitaciones que las casas. Okay. Apartments have just as many rooms as houses. Los apartamentos tienen justo tantas habitaciones como las casas, es decir, mm. tienen tantas habitaciones como las casas, ok, and thank you, Herman, uh, let's go with last person, Abigail, are you there? Yes. Ok, thank you. <laughs> Apartments don't have as much privacy as houses. Eh, los apartamentos no tienen mucha privacidad como las casas. Uh -huh. Los apartamentos no tienen tanta privacidad como las casas. Ok. As much privacy as houses. Ok. And in that case, Rebecca, pointing out to your previous question, I can add the, the verb do at the end of that sentence. So I could say apartments don't have as much privacy as houses do, as houses do. You could say that apartments have just as many rooms as houses do. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Questions? Questions? No questions? Mm -hmm. Do you think you can handle it? <laughs> Do you think you can handle this? You can handle it. Just copy. Can you repeat the last example, please? The the meaning. Okay. I confuse. Apartments don't have as don't much have. privacy as houses. Okay. Los apartamentos no tienen tanta privacidad. Como las casas. Los apartamentos no tienen tanta privacidad como las casas. I'm sending you the. But you say, but you say uh, we, uh, we can use the auxiliary verb at the end of the sentence. As well, that is correct. 
Apartment don't have what did I say? I missed it. Don't have as much. Don't have as much previous houses. Okay. And most previously houses. Another another structure of sentence. A structure. A structure. <laughs> Okay, apartments don't have as much privacy as houses. And yes, you can add the word do at the end of that sentence specifically. Okay. Just picturing, okay, the Empire, the, um, the Eiffel Tower is as tall as the Pisa Tower is not true. Let's make it negative. It's no, it's not true. <laughs> the <laughs> Tower isn't as tall as the Pisa Tower. I'm using the word tower there, I'm sorry. Okay, the Eiffel Tower isn't as tall as the Pisa Tower. In that example, I could say the Eiffel Tower isn't as tall as the tower is. I can add the auxiliary at the, at the end of the sentence too. The Eiffel Tower isn't as tall as the piece of tower is. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. But uh, all, all sentences, uh, maybe I confuse it. Uh, it's, it's like comparison between uh, one thing and another thing. Yes, you're comparing between two things. Okay. Okay. I lost less. <laughs> yeah, you need to, to practice this part, guys, this session. This session. I'll send you again the uh, link of this video. And please go to the platform, see the exercises, the examples on the platform. And don't forget, uh, we need to finish tomorrow section number three with the exercises and the videos. So don't miss tomorrow. It's Friday. Y lo voy a decir en español. Tenemos clase mañana, señores. No se me vayan a escapar. Yeah. Yo sé que el viernes el... <laughs> lo sabe, pero después de las 10. <laughs> toda... I see. Turna, so. No miss. No, bueno. Send us uh, 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 support. Oh, support the yes, there is and there are. And nobody reminded me. Nadie me recordó. So, ahorita, ahorita lo hago, ¿ok? Nomás terminamos la sesión y les envío eso para que ustedes se, se apoyen en eso también. Pero recuerden que lo más importante es su plataforma. De eso depende la beca, ¿ok? Ok. 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 Got it. Okay. I got it. See you tomorrow. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye.